Before anyone says anything, my internet fucking. I, why is? Does Pablo think that he had autonomy to, <laughs> to say something and ruin the intro? What the <laughs> fuck was that? Does, did he think that he had authority to do that? Who the hell does the intern think he is? Man. What was that? Not only did he mess up and blame his internet, he then hijacks the show <laughs> to say that. Ruins, we have had, we have done a podcast for 11 years. I don't think there's been a time, including when other people have hosted, that the first words said aren't welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't think so. 11 years. Over oh, almost a thousand episodes between hangover time, post game shows, and the regular pod. And for some reason, <laughs> intern decided that's well, not important uh, today. He said that uh, I need to clear my name before anything else happens. <laughs> that that was more important. He was as much of a team player as Jimmy Butler was tonight. And with that, we welcome, welcome, welcome you to the Miami Heat. <laughs> I am your host, Sir Carlo Navas. Hollering. With me today, was that not professional or what? I was a fucking. Uh, it's bro. fantastic. Type shit. We got the great Siobhan. Siobhan, it's been a minute since I've been on a show with you. How are you? Yeah, it's been a minute since I've been up here. Hello, people. You know, I've been great. This team has been whatever. The women's tournament <laughs> has been great. So, you know, I've been elsewhere. But hello. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, we got Saucy Takes, Coach Lou. What is going on, man? What is going on? Um, <laughs> you know? Nah. A lot. Um, At least the intern showed up. Did he, though? Did he? He showed up as much as Bam did so Sandwich, far. you and the intern can get out of here. And, <laughs> and last but certainly Kidding. not least, the great, uh, the reality check master, Tiffany Meeks. Hey, no, High School Five. I, I mean, <laughs> I was ready to come on here and just let that chopper sing because my man was putting in work. He still I mean, should. I, I, but, you know, I guess sometimes it be that way. Sometimes, <laughs> Tiff, you are absolutely correct. It be that way. The Miami Heat fall to the Philadelphia 76ers in a game by which they did not score a point. Uh, they did, they scored three points in the final, I believe, seven minutes, and they had one field goal in the final eight minutes Christ. of play. Absolutely. A, a collapse. It wasn't even that big a collapse. It's not like they blew, like, a 10-point lead or anything. I think they were exactly. – the Sixers weren't great either. <laughs> bon, you know, the fact that you only – how many did they lose by five? Yeah. Man. You didn't score for half the quarter. That That's that's some shit, you that know? That was mid on mid. mid on Bro, that mid. was – Mid-off mid <laughs> mid of all time. Yo, that was close to time. The lights is halfway up, and you Man. scrounge it through the bar, and you tap that shoulder, and you turn, you say, nah, I'm good. Never mind. I'm going to just go ahead. I got to early go start. I'm going to go home. I, I got to get up early. Morning. Let the yeah. dog out. You know, I'm positive news. <laughs> Shout out to JG, who just reached subscriber prime this 25 months. That's two years, baby. Love you too, yeah. my brother. You sign, you sign enough for that much more heat? Keep beat, you know. Keep keep beat, guys. Let's let's do something different today. Let's talk about our least let's favorite win. part. Let's talk about well, that, that would have been the choice. Let's talk about our least favorite part of, of down the stretch. We'll go around the room. We'll start with me, we'll, we'll, oh, um, Lou, uh, Tiff, then Bond. I'm this all in. Plenty. I, I'm all in with with the final possession in general, but but really the Jimmy three. Which was my my reaction was to say, "What the fuck, Jimmy Butler?" When a man show you who he is, he is and keep telling you, him. "I'm gonna keep believe being the same him. motherfucker until I make one." Right? Like <laughs> we, I just told y'all, we've seen this movie before. You've seen it in black and white. You've seen it in color. You've seen it in Betamax. You we've have seen, seen it. it. We see it with subtitles, right? You see the 4K, 2K. I saw that shit theater. in Braille. Listen, Man. you saw that shit in Braille. You saw <laughs> it in Braille. Yes, saw so, it in Braille. My God, right? <laughs> like you, we we gotta stop acting like 
this never happens. This always happens. Everyone watching that game knew Jimmy <laughs> was taking that three. Let me tell y'all something. I went to the bathroom when I knew he was taking that three. Like, yeah, I didn't well, even watch. I just walked away. I wish I just came to start the show already. When he I came that. to set up. Yeah, when I, I was like, you know, <laughs> was it Was it when he took the one dribble stop and then pulled it out? That that's when that's when we all knew. It was it was when Spo <laughs> didn't call the fucking timeout after Terry was on the floor for like three seconds after he passed that ball. Which and didn't I want to I want to say something. <laughs> I think Terry played a good game, and I think he's played really well lately. Dog, oh, sometimes man. you're a little. You, you can't. You, you're not Kyrie Irving. You can't be dancing like that. Get a fucking call for a screen. Bring the ball out. You, you can't. You can't spin me right round, baby, right round over and over again. <laughs> Until Tyrese Maxey. Tiff, what do you got? I I agree. However, but I'm gonna say, however, <laughs> however, however, however. While he was while while he was making music, nobody was writing words. I agree. Homeboy was dribbling. I I let me tell you something. The two people who were supposed to be doing something off the ball to get the ball did nothing. So why as we could say you do it too much. What else was he supposed Jimmy to do? And I mean, to his, or something. Exactly. To, to his credit, he had just did too much on the right side and got and it. And made and it. So it, it was it was it was right at time for him to make the pass on the other side. When he got yeah. into his dancing, Jimmy brought his defender though, and then because yep. he had he had he didn't have him on the right side, he had him beat behind the back, and then Jimmy comes and brings his, and it's like, oh well, here we go. Again. Yeah, there was you know, nowhere to go. But it was about time for him to move there. I understand. It but was. like, I don't get why Jimmy doesn't come screen because they probably switched that, and then Jimmy gets Maxi on him, and then you just flip the ball over to Jimmy, and he has Maxi on him with the game on the line. That's what you know. In, in and he theory, had a fine screening angle. There was no need for him to try to come. It could have exactly. just been a flat screen. It didn't have to for be sure. like a, a right. Man, that that was my least favorite part of the game, Lou. What, what, what of the of the collapse, Lou? What was yours? <sighs> Um, do I only have to pick one? Jesus Christ. You have Christ. to pick one because we need enough moments for the room. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Um, this is Actually, difficult. you know what, Lou? You go last. We just finished Women's History Month. Uh, Tiff, you go, then Bond, then Lou. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want them to run out. You, you go last. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I'm hollering. <laughs> right. Uh, my, my least, Your least favorite, favorite part... Uh... Was that we just didn't we didn't let the bench just finish it? If you're not gonna do anything, if you're gonna be unproductive on the court, leave the guys out there that's doing it. Win or lose, you got to get to the point where we're trying to win games, right? Kevin Love had five thousand two hundred seventy six and thirteen rebounds. Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm, listen. If Bam's not going to get the offense going, if Jimmy's not, somebody's got to crash the boards and do all these other things. They weren't productive. Stick with the guys who are working. Well, I, I thought it. I thought they moved off of Kevin Love in time because I think when they couldn't play the zone anymore, I, I thought he overstayed his welcome a little bit toward the end of, of that I stand in, in the fourth quarter. And, and, and you know what? Let Jesus, let Jesus be a butterfly. You still lost. So sure. you don't, we don't know. We don't know. But we don't. he was productive as hell when he was there. So at some point, lose with Kevin Love. It's better than losing with Jimmy on that three. Bomb, what was your least favorite part of the game? My part? least favorite part of the collapse, I'm just going to say the inability to retain the ball. Mm. And you can take yeah. that for like the last five-ish minutes. The Hamish rebound, there was a couple things Bam got his hands on and then, like, didn't. Um, there was something else that came unloose, just the lack of ball security, the lack of possession security, the whole waning five minutes of the game was really stressful for me. And then I also agree with, like, the closing rotations. Um, I don't know. I ooh, I could have gone with less Jaime. Um mm. And maybe you go Caleb sooner than you did. I, I think that if you're gonna lose with one of the kids on, Nicola had been getting. Nicola was the only one kind of from the beginning trying to press, trying to you know do some good things kind of on the on the on the break. But I understand not wanting or not 
<laughs> feeling like you want to put Nicola in those situations yet, but you got to sometime. I don't know. I'm going to say the ball security and I was iffy on the close. close uh, yeah, I, I agree with, with your point on Jaime. Uh, Lou, what was your least favorite part of the collapse? Um, I already, I already pre-mentioned like the, the Spo not calling a timeout. That That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But uh, another pretty big part I felt like was when we were starting to get a rhythm and we did start to go like right before the collapse started, what kicked off the collapse was they went to zone and we didn't have enough shooting on the floor. Sub yeah. out Jaime, bring another shooter on the floor. Yeah. Whether whether that's Duncan, whether that's Terry was shooting the ball really well. Somebody who you feel comfortable taking these open shots. No disrespect to Caleb, but they got a Caleb three and it didn't fall. And they just, the, the Heat have struggled against zone recently really bad. And, you know, it's just been, they needed the shooting on the floor. It's felt like, especially when the other team goes zone and they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, the only points they got when they went zone was literally, it wasn't even a basket made. It was Jimmy drawing a foul off of a timely cut on the yeah. right wing. Like, Look, can I ask you a question? Let me ask you a question. Duncan mm -hmm. wasn't coming back. And that I agree. Back. He wasn't coming back. Who who would you... I had Nico. Have? Those are the minutes where okay. I personally would have liked to see Nicola. That, because that's what it I'm was saying. his own pick and it's pop. Nicola, operation. Duncan, Terry. One of those three guys should have been inserted earlier. And yeah. I think, not just, not just the last time out, I think Spo took way too much time to call the second time, the first time out that he called in the quarter. Um... The, after after the uh the, it was like a, a semi fast break behind me had the ball it's unfortunate he threw that he almost killed jimmy butler just on that lob realistically <laughs> it was that was probably my second least favorite part but Girl. just it's it's the just the inability to just like notice like the team had no legs at that point like that that five man rotation had played for what felt like the entire quarter and with high energy they had done their job they could not move on the defensive end no more. I th the rebound was was uh, a miracle. Like you know, Hyman getting the pass at that point was it was just it just felt like the Spo's end of it could have been better in terms of fatigue management. Yeah. So that that that's my and and and, and before anybody says I fucking love Spo, but hey, gotta call no, it what yeah, it is. Today. You could criticize. Spoh. Yeah, call you're it not, what it is you're today. Not dogging him, you're being no. critical. Uh, absolutely call it what it is today was not one of his best um best days kevin love made him look really good um <laughs> kevin love, kevin love tends yeah. to do things around him yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you know you know what else i love our subscribers and jay jock at 39 months got hey. love love the support of of folks in chat and only glasses we subscribe with prime six months that's half a year that's still a lot of time so love and appreciate you guys <laughs> for for sticking with us through Thanks. this time yeah it, it, especially on on nights like tonight where I, I feel like we need community more than ever and uh we go to a brian goins tweet uh said i'm afraid we've seen the end of, of playoff jimmy we, oh, man. <laughs> that, so we've lost people we, we've lost people <laughs> we've lost our co-worker we've just lost people can we do an overreaction scale come tiff, on tiff voice we we just losing we we lost we're just losing <laughs> Man. Um, look at that. More people subscribing. Mr. Robot 561 resubscribed 38 months. I'm saying, man. I don't yes. know. I will say this about Jimmy. I mean, I didn't go ahead. Right. Like, like, he, <laughs> he's not wrong, but you don't got to put it after he missed he, a three. He, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tweet that on an off day, Brian. Nobody's going to come at you. He didn't have a. No, he's Brian's right. I, Yo, I he know. is. He is. He's Loki. He's Loki. Yo, he's Loki cooking. <laughs> just, just say it. Say it uh, on an off day, you know. Like say it, text it, uh, put, tweet it tomorrow, Brian. Come on, man. Nah, uh, tonight was tonight was the night. That's when you get maximum emotion. You get people agreeing. People are just like I, so one. One guy commented on that tweet. We've seen the end of the playoff heat. They they went. They want. They took dramatic to a step forward. See, like, and this right. is why you can't make space for like this is why you can't make space for a dramatic with even small bits of dramatic because you just right. open portals and then you just get shit right. like that and it's like. Come Okay. And they would be right, but let me introduce you to a little-known team called the Chicago Bulls. They stink. You know, Miami, Miami's not losing to them in a play-in game. You know what I mean? Atlanta's pretty stinky, too. Oh, oh, Bonnie, are you on the Chicago train? 
No, I'm just saying. We, we be real like, certain we about stuff. Like we did and That's almost lose to Chicago in the plan before. Like. We need to stop making proclamations because yeah. last time I checked, I said this was a game that was going to show you a lot about what you're doing moving forward. Chat says Demar is poised to ruin your year. Poised. He is. That he actually is would be the he funniest. The absolute funniest way to end a year in which Kyle Lowry got traded to death. <laughs> would be DeMar DeRozan doing that. Just be ending my se- Just ending ending our season. Just you to death, G. Listen, the jo- joke's on them. An early vacation might not be the worst thing in the world for me. You know, let me just... Y'all aren't wrong there I'm, either. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I keep, mean, so let's, let's keep it. Let's keep draft it. Draft B. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Moose. Let's keep it a stack. So, yeah, Jimmy, guys, I was just unimpressed. You know, and somebody in chat asked earlier, it's like, why didn't Jimmy take advantage of Kyle Lowry playing like when Kyle defended him? And I was like, oh, what? Maxi. Yeah, he I mean, Maxi is the real problem. I mean, Kyle's a difficult guy to post up. And, and I yes. think Jimmy, knows, yes. Jimmy should know better than trying to move a, a tree stump. But, you know, guys like Maxi, guys like other people like that, he has a clear power advantage and a height advantage against. You know, I, I just didn't feel the aggression there. Uh, he took and beat off the dribble one time on the baseline, which I liked. I think they got an open corner three off of that. Uh, Love was in the corner. Um, like they, they got some good looks, but they just, he's just general, he was not Tiff. We can start kind of get your thoughts on this. I just don't think he's in attack mode enough. I don't think that he's looking to score enough. And I just don't think that they can survive him. Just kind of vibe it. Well, they not. What did I tell you the other night for oh, them yeah, to you- win this game? I said he needed to have 30 and not have a pedestrian game. Like, this is not a secret. I don't know why all of a sudden people thought that, like, on a random Thursday, playoff Jimmy was showing up. Like, we pray and playoff Jimmy show up at some point. But, like, it may not happen. Mm-hmm. Therefore, there better be a playoff Bam in there somewhere. Like, okay. like Playoff Heisman. The, oh, I ain't worried about that. We're cool. Like, <laughs> all I you. know is, all I know is, somebody should have gave High Smith the ball for a couple of open threes oh, in those oh. final five minutes. But I ain't gonna say nothing else. But he was open. Listen, they need, they need thirty from Jimmy. They need playoff Bam. They need Terry to give you something. And they I mean Duncan something. Healthy. I mean that's listen. I'm not even gonna lie. It's probably not happening. And it's okay. Like, I'm, I am a realist. I am a realist, and I believe you don't win without these teams, without Jimmy giving you 30. Because Yeah, I know. You're right. You, you just don't because nobody else can consistently do it this season. Not, and saying, that's they what, can't, not yeah. saying they can't do it at all. I'm, pre- I'm talking about this season. No one has done it. And I feel like even Bam and his capabilities of doing it. So if this were so if this were the season, Bam was like, "All right, I'm gonna be that guy consistently. You're not gonna feel a an, an assertive drop off for me come playoffs, whatever." I still don't know that Philly is the matchup for you to get the the fullness of whatever that Bam looks like. Um, because as gimpy as he is, like Joel is still like huge. Like that is a lot of human to have to 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 deal with. He's light on his feet when he's going to use his feet and try to you know do things around the rim. That little broke ass, slow ass dirt turnaround is like you know pretty stable. So I just feel like you know this is definitely a, a, a Jimmy. You have to kind of be the guy matchup, but maybe only because, or not even only because, but definitely because you know maybe our insides are a little bit neutralized, but that's what we're supposed to be built, like, you know, cool around the perimeter for. And eh. I thought mm. the zone did a good job on Embiid today. I thought that's like when they, when he looked a little sluggish and slow, I thought it was the zone with love. And I thought they did a good job of loading up on the ball. They forced turnovers. That's kind of like what they like to do. And I thought when mm-hmm. Bam Callen came in the game, uh, kind of transitioning over from slandering Jimmy to slandering Bam, uh, you know, Bam did a lot of one-on-one guarding. I, I just don't think that Miami's help is big enough anymore, and I don't yes. think it's as yep. as good. I, I just think they're they're just it's just smaller. And and I Jaime actually had some of my favorite help on Embiid. You know, throughout the night, like on those late doubles mm-hmm. or whatever, he had one where he affected a shot from behind. Like he he had some moments 
uh, yeah. that they're, they're going to need more of. But I just think in general, like the zone was the most effective and they just kind of, I understand why they went away from it. Cause you know, right. you know, Maxi as a pull-up guy, you know, as a guy who kind of, and Lowry, I thought Lowry did a really good job of kind of swinging the ball around the zone. Um, and, and he, you know, pretty knows pretty intimately how it works. I get why they went away from it, and I don't think they can rely on zone the whole game. But I just think that's a problem that when they can't lean on something like that, you know, like against Denver, against Philly, like it looks so, it looks just so, it looks like it's so bad. I, you know, I think aside from that, like early stretch in that first quarter, because Maxi was getting to the rim. Like the, you mean Will? the first like seven minutes of the game? Yes, that was yes. Oh. that that de- the defense there. I have nothing to say. Two? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that defense there I have nothing to say. It was horrendous. Is this shirt tight? I don't Chad, it's Chad has been saying all night. I mean, this is you know. Oh, uh, when you are we no. are we that is it is it that bad? Like, <laughs> what's 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 going on here? No, you were fine. Why'd you what's get up and put to show us and then it rots? Jeez, I don't know. It's just fine. everyone. Everyone's just like, oh, but the shirt's Y'all too speedy. I, all day, all chat. I'm like, leave God Brittany damn. alone. God. <laughs> they said it's Terry tight. It's Terry tight. Cut it out. Ah. It I'm sorry, Anna. Lewis. Just, I have to defend myself. Nah, man. Nah, man. I, but, like, but, like, <laughs> but no, I, I think uh, the first um, seven minutes were as tight as G's shirt. <laughs> No, it, it, it the first seven minutes I have nothing to say. Uh, realistically, Woo. they were really, really bad. Right. Uh, but I think after that, a lot of really, really tough, tough shot making. Like Maxi, yeah. tip your hat to him. Like they made an incredible amount of mid range shots. A lot of them were long mid range shots. So I do think the defense was working to a certain point. They were just making more shots than us at that point. And you tip your hat to them. I do think what killed us was the offense. I I don't think yeah, the yeah. defense really was bad aside from that stretch. No, no, I I don't either. I, yeah. I want to. I, I think the the first <laughs> seven Bede minutes did go off, and so, I was just piggybacking uh, off but, of Bond. Yeah, yeah, and and Embiid, Embiid, but Embiid didn't do like okay, he did it with shots. I feel comfortable with him taking, which is long mid range shots. By all means, Embiid, you tip your cap to him. He didn't really go into the paint much. He wasn't really bullying in the paint as much as he typically does, or post up as much as he typically does. Some of that is he's getting back into form. And even Maxi, aside from that stretch in the first quarter, he really wasn't getting all the way to the rim. It was just a lot of tough mid-range shots, man. And you know, you took your your cap that's to that. That's his game. I was that's about to say even, some of these that's shots not even are irregular. tough shots. That's Maxi's like, game. I, I I don't disagree with that, but there's shots that statistically you're still gonna live with because he was getting. I'd rather a tough mid-range shot from Maxi than a shot at the rim from Maxi. So I mean, they were yeah, making it, and these were contested jumpers. The only one that wasn't contested in terms of like from the second quarter on was that one on the left side on Terry. He Listen, dusted Terry. Hey Lou, no shade, no tea, but you're gonna get both of those looking at our guard, our guards playing defense. Like this is so this is where I kind of have a question for everybody. Our backcourt, like, yes, Terry is scrappy. He tries. This ain't it. <laughs> Like are uh, you like literally like you said that first seven minutes between Terry and Duncan, it was not even a slowdown of Maxi. He just did whatever he wanted to do that whole time. At some point, we got to tighten up that backcourt, and nobody yeah. wants to talk. Everybody wants to talk about oh this person that person. No, I don't care how good Terry is. I don't know what's ha- happening with Duncan's back. But realistically, that ain't it going into the playoffs. Yeah. They, they need a they, – go ahead, Bon. No, no, no. Go. They need a what? They just need life out of those guys, particularly like Duncan and, and they, just the ball handlers in general. I just think that they're short on guys like that. and they, they really not – I think a lot was made of how deep they were, but I, I really just think that like a lot of that depth is like they have a lot of guys <laughs> that wait. can be like your sixth, seventh, best player five through seven they don't have like more like i think you want your depth to be like i want like a lot of third and and fourth best players you know what i mean and i think when guys you know you kind of need the guys that are playing like really really well to be available and healthy and you know so yeah 
Tiff, I'm weak at you because I, I I saw what you what you reacted to there. <clears throat> and I, gee, I don't know that you're incorrect in saying it and the um, the emphasis on what looks like depth for this current build or this roster. Um, and I think that like I don't while I don't disagree with you, um, I. I, I get like what Tiff's saying, even, even with, I don't know, I guess even with the offensive acumen of a third ish, fourth ish best player in your backcourt, like I defensively we're vulnerable in the backcourt. And I don't know that there's okay. any, that there's any uh, amalgamation of, of point getting between one and two that is not going to overtax like three, four or five defensively as we kind of have, have seen. And it's just, it's tough given what three, four or five between like Jimmy, Bam, whomever kind of the four, I don't know. It's like just the feel, the energy, the, the liveliness uh, of kind of the group, but especially like the forwards, even with again, uh, maybe three ish guy next to Terry or whatever, offensively, I, we're still weak there. And those are still places to, to point at. I think, I think it's kind of Lou. Go ahead. No, no, yeah. Uh, it's it's tough because the 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 guys that you do trust at the point of attack just aren't giving you what you need offensively. So it's, right, right. But a, that's what we're saying. There's always you're always going to be wanting for one side you're, of that you're, pole. Yeah, you're you're exactly you're pushing for something that's not there. Um, yeah. I I do think I don't think Terry's been horrible defensively i just I don't. Think, uh, today was not a good showing by any means i'm not gonna not gonna discredit that it's tough because um you know it, it's it is max we theoretically you could still see this team in the playoffs like you never know what can happen um but it you know the the good part like i try to look at the glass half full i don't think um like in particular i mean boston might not even need a point guard that's fast but like just that speed is a struggle for us to deal with yeah. And Maxi is, in terms of speed, probably the one of the quickest, if not the fastest, at exploding and getting through the hole. And he's a really good pull-up shooter. So he provides certain problems that we didn't have an answer for. And the Heat weren't switching as much as they typically should. They haven't really the whole season. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious how much they tap into that um, at some point or maybe in the playoffs themselves. But um, it, it's 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 definitely, you know, it's it's a hole on the team. It was... To be honest, it was something that you know Gabe Vincent is missed heavily oh, for it. Just, oh yeah, just the ability to guard POA and provide something offensively, even if it is inconsistent. Just his willingness to shoot and to be able to hit those big shots um, just meant a lot to the team. And that they don't have anybody walking through that door who's going to do that. So, listen, you are preaching to the Gabe Vincent fan club over here. Yeah, I love Gabe. <laughs> Listen, you, you, you don't got to say that. Um, let's close it out with, with kind of Bam's offense because, well, we want to talk about Highsmith. Uh, we'll, we'll be real yeah. quick on Bam. Then we'll get we'll get to the good and, and how good Highsmith was. We'll close on a positive note with Highsmith. Um, just real quick, um, <clears throat> Tiff, I don't know what's going on with him. but And, and, and I, don't, I don't know on offense if you saw anything that Philly was doing in particular or do you just think he just had a, another off night? It was just such a. It looked looked as bad as I've ever seen. I mean, they in doubled him struggle. here. Yeah, like they doubled him here and there. It wasn't a lot of that. You know what? He reverts back to old habits. He loses the ball. He brings the ball down. Sometimes he's too slow in his decision making. Sometimes he's too fast. Correct. Like he just to me, he literally looked like he just reverted back to old habits on the offense. And that's just that's just signs to me of like a young player like that. Just you think everything is put together and then there's a game and you're just like you really just like lost the ball on a turnaround with no one next to you. Like this is it's a little bit unsettling because I thought he was hitting a groove and I thought tonight he was going to like rubber stamp this game. Um, There was a point where he's beyond the three point line. Embiid comes out. He pump fakes. Embiid goes up in the air, Mm -hmm. but instead of him driving past, I don't know what he did. And Embiid had time to recover and basically push him baseline 
and then he had to force him into a pass like at the end of the shot clock like those types of things like there is no way you should pump fake and Embiid have time to go up come down and recover like that's ridiculous and that was multiple times that he couldn't take advantage of Embiid who is actively slower than him like oh no no jimmy did it too but we're not talking about jimmy jimmy also did that but we're not talking about jimmy we talking about bam so i don't know if you guys saw any of those things but like it's not even i'm not even mad or upset i'm honestly like yo that's it's sad because at this point of his career we shouldn't be having these same things over and over i um i agree with a lot of what you said to and you didn't like open it up but i'm gonna take it a little no, bit no 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 it, it was it was it was really it was really a go around the room i got type, you type of, yeah, yeah um so i have i've been here for like the last chunk of games but i haven't been like all the way as present as i maybe you know usually am but i what i thought was interesting today and it bothered me a little bit and i tweeted about it and it might sound like one of those kind of like superstitious types of things but i think that there is something to opening the game with a concerted effort at getting bam a touch and it's an interior touch and i think it allows him to get one himself to get touched early um it you you get a kind of an early read on what uh philly wants to do situationally in the it's always the opening play is always either like a cross screen from the guard bringing Bam over or a diagonal up screen trying to settle Bam on the block or kind of off the extended and that's not what they went to today and it felt disjointed from the very beginning. The one, the very first play that they did score on felt like a fucking accident because I don't know if you're, it was Jimmy driving from the left wing. Um, Bam kind of cut from like, it was Jimmy driving from the right wing. Bam kind of kind of cut from like the left midway point, but they, they managed to stop themselves kind of where they were perfectly aligned, but they were, all, they were this close to kind of being in each other's way yep. um, as they kind of always are. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I thought the beginning of today was interesting uh, tactically, and you know, I genuinely just think that, uh, however limited or or slow, and I know that Bam has it to you know exploit the matchup. It's about doing it consistently for me, and I do just feel like Joel is a tough matchup for him. For as slow as it is, just as paint cloggy as he as Joel makes things. Tobias wasn't there, but that's someone else who kind of got some range and some athleticism to him. Like, I don't know. We've seen Bam, you know, have a good Philly series, but there is something particular about the Joel matchup that's like completely separate from like the Giannis matchup or like a Julius Randle matchup, who I think is a formidable matchup, but just there's something about just the girth and the space that, that Joel just kind of takes up. He's too damn big for Bam. Bam Bam is. He's yes. And there's nothing that you can do about that. In, in, In order for Bam to pull him out, the jumper needs to be hitting. The jumper wasn't hitting particularly in the first half. I think the second half, he played a a lot better, at least in that third quarter. But the first half was putrid. It was what it was. And and Embiid does this thing, and he doesn't just do this against Miami. He does this against everybody. He hits like a half, like, it looks like he's going for the pump fake, but he's just so damn big that he just hits like a half. Like, he's almost jumping to jump back, and he does that really well. And Bam just doesn't have, very few people have the, not just the weird, like the quickness to get by, but then the length and power to hold him off and to finish. Yep. So mm-hmm. b- if Bam doesn't have that yet, and he's Bam looks really good when he's either getting fed the ball or when his jump shot is falling. Today they didn't do a good job of feeding him the ball, and his jump shot wasn't falling. So it's a bad Bam game. Like this is who Bam is. This is who he has been for about three years now. For being very honest, offensively, the shots coming along better, at least with more range, but. You're still going to have these kind of moments. It just sucks that it was against Embiid, and it sucked that that first half was fucking horrible. Lastly, to your point, Lou, I and I feel like Joel is enough of an asshole, but also intelligent enough basketball-wise yes, to where, sure. Bam, I'm not going to follow you all the way out here. You get your fake up. You can kind of weave me through yeah. the paint, but as soon as you get, like, <clears throat> elbow extended and beyond, I'm cool. I'm going to just settle here, and then you – let you try to dictate what it is that you think you have and what your advantage is here. Cause I'm going to disagree. Bam's best games against Philly has been when he's killing that 15 foot shot. And to date he wasn't doing it and they give it to him. They give it to him. They're just but bad he just, against size, like in general, in general. Yes. When those guys, and I had this thought when Rozier 
got Embiid uh, on the Switch, and I was just mm-hmm. like, why? Why is this such a problem for anybody that comes in here? And it's because he's gonna any big, whether it's Embiid, whether it's Maxi Kleba, whether it's freaking you know anybody, any kind of big that is like just a, uh, defensively that is not in a in a Bucks drop, right? That's just gonna mm-hmm. sink off enough that you can't drive by. And that have long enough arms that they can contest the pull up. Mm-hmm. They teams just pack the paint against Miami because they're not scared of that corner guy. They're never scared of that corner guy. So when that guy is is in, they can't. That that's easy help. There's nowhere to go. Even if they do beat and beat, they have to take the long way around. You know what I mean? They got they got to kind of like got to loop around. And that that little second gets help. Let's help get there. A little bit quicker, and they can't get the pull up because those guys. So it's just like, if Gee. Bam's, go ahead. No, go finish. Like that's when Bam's crucial, and, and to lose point about the little fifteen foot jumper. That's that. That's that screen and slip, catch the ball at the nail, like you know below the free throw line, whatever. And hey, can, can you knock that down? Can you hit a floater? Can you hit a jump shot? Can you pump fake and get a guy in the air? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those little, you know, those little like kind yeah, of. He's got to get one of those. those and Beat has guys. it. Yeah, and I understand that. that Bam's not like you're not, but Bam's athletic enough and not a five to where he has it. I think (laughs) I think that's one of the the hardest things to teach a player is to have touch. I agree. Gain touch. Well, I agree. Well, he and he have a bunch of untouch. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's only time. But we also just have to be honest and say somebody better touch the ball in the off season. He has to come back. He has to come back with a package of something. Yeah. This can't be solely it. Like, it can't be. He's so athletic. He's so good. There is no way that we should be okay as fans, and he should be okay as a player with very limited moves. The problem is, Tiff, with him, I agree with everything you're saying. His best place in the offense is in the mid post as a face-up player. I think that's his most productive. The best games he's ever had, the ones where he scores 40, are from there. The issue is, is that that's only good for him. And he the, the best way that he can help them is by being a shooter and by being a rim roller. Because where he can have the ball and dribble and do stuff, it's in the mid yeah, no, and and Bond, know, Bond's like he's a Bond wants him to be a four on offense. I just think that like he can't be a perimeter player. He has to be like a mid post player. That's where your think... fours typically begin. They'll settle. They'll sink out kind of to the perimeter. But yeah, just, to, that, but that's, even that's, in that position, that's, that's it's fine. It's but the I'm lack just saying of that, that's, that's not good for well, the team. That's part of it. Yeah, fair. Like, I think, I, yes, because like it's, in an ideal world, Tiff. Because I agree with what you're saying about him. But I think in an ideal world. He's a rim roller with shooters and better offensive players that are going to handle the ball in more dangerous spots of the floor that can get to the paint easier, that are quicker, that are just better, that have better touch. Like if Bam is like your fourth or third best offensive player, you're doing fantastic. And I think you're winning bubble, championships. You're right? hanging banners yearly. They do. Okay. Because like but yearly, you can't ask they... him to do yeah. like I think against these like better defensive teams. It's a fucking struggle. You want him? I think his primary and best role on offense is as a rim roller and as an elbow facilitator. Right. I think That's they have, but they you, have, they're going to have a struggle striking the balance between them. That's our best way to win. But like the, the most that we like, there's more than you can get out of BAM than rim rolling and like, those as the elbow moves. facilitating, I think is like really important. And, and I think he has and, so much more to offer you, but you have to be. And maybe it comes at the expense of winning, and maybe they're just not kind of like at that timeline yet. They're still pushing for wins. But I'm I'm not disagreeing with you that that is the best functional use of him now. But I think that that taps him out and ultimately kind of taps out yep. where you can well, take this ahead, right. Well, a team you know, him. I, I've I've said and I think I've said it to you, G. I know I say it to Bond all the time. For me, I like Bam at seventeen points anywhere between 12 and 15 boards and five assists. I like that bam. Yes. I don't I, I that's the bam I like. 40 point bam, that's a problem. But you know why I say he needs these other things? 
Gee, there's no one else. Yep. No, no, yeah. Uh, so it, this is why not. I keep saying it. There is no one and else. That's why so I said we, I agree with you. So I don't, because I say to you all the time, I don't want Bam being an option. Like I want. I just want no. you vibing. I want you exactly. I want Bam to get the ball and do what he could do. Get you two points. Get the re- do all those things and score. But I don't want the game to have to come down to Bam has to get thirty. I mean, I but, agree with that, but I want I agree with you there while still wanting him to be an option. Absolutely. It could be a lesser option. Yeah, yeah. But I listen. I, we just like, need him to not be the primary me, option or a secondary. Or the secondary. I just don't if think he. He if you're telling me you. Bam's going to look like this next season? Well, I, yes. No, no. He's, no, not, a, he, he's not an option. He'll be shooting there's, more, which I think I'm, is if I'm, if I'm being if honest. If you're handle. winning a chip, if you're winning a chip, he can't come back looking like this. Correct. Tiff, if Don't they're going to win a chip with what they're doing now, then we'll let you loot after yeah. this, is they need to be, no questions asked, the best defense in the league. And look, they're not. And they're yeah, not. That, That's not happening. And they're not. Not it, with this team. No. The the thing with Bam is, I, okay, I, I think realistically, there's a lot that has been, I don't want to say rediscovered or discovered. I just want to say tapped into recently in terms of his spacing that with a full offseason of work and like yes. Spo actually getting. And it being to, intentional about it being exactly. a part of the it's game. Completely yes. different. I don't want Bam in the mid post. I think that shit is fucking you. We have 17 guys on the <laughs> roster, 14 of them operating. Yeah, I agree. Post. I'm just saying that he no, 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 there. I, get him away from there. Set his uh, ass in the corner. Put him at the top of the key. Like, Let him most space. Space. Lose Let him space. <laughs> I'm so tired of the mid post shit. Let him space. Uh, Nobody else plays through the mid post. There's one guy who plays through the mid post. It's fucking Jokic. And the reason he does it is because he shoots 78% on floaters. He hell doesn't yeah, do brother. that. He's 71. <laughs> he doesn't do that. Adjust your game. I think with more time, I do think Bam could be a third option. Ideally, I don't think he should be a second option. And if he is your second option, I think your first option got to be the best player in the fucking league. Agreed. And well, first Jimmy option has to that. be MVP so, Steph Curry. Yeah, and and Jimmy isn't that. So Correct. with that being said, they need to they need to do different things, and they need to figure out how to space Bam better. I think a full off season would do him wonders, and I do think getting more two way pieces onto the floor would just make his job in general easier. But I had just one last takeaway, and it's not Bam. Last really. takeaway, and then we gotta get to Heisman. I'm sorry, I, yeah, I, I gotta get to that. It, this is this involves Heisman. Okay. This okay. involves Heisman. Okay. So go ahead. During during the stretch where the Heat started. During that second quarter run where they started coming back, um, things we've seen in the past with Kevin Love on the floor is they put the center on Highsmith. They tried that. He lit his ass up. Two got times. cooked. He they got tried cooked. It. Hold they up. Tried it. Hold up. But now this is my concern. They saw that that wasn't working and they went to uh, Embiid on Jaime. Jaime needs to hit these fucking shots if he's going to get guarded like that in the second unit. I agree. And yeah, th- go, it's go, just. Go, go, it's, go. No, it was just something I noticed, and it's it's it, you know first of all credit credit to to Highsmith he's been fucking sensational he's been their best bench player for about two weeks now I think I said it last though it's still continued he was their best bench player today aside from Kevin Love Kevin Love was not a bench player today he was their superstar you, I need you to just stop saying bench player yeah because I'm just saying he's playing off the bench I don't mean it with disrespect I know Vaughn really wanted to get into her last point and then we'll get to Highsmith I don't want to leave you hanging. No, you're fine. Lou, I agree with what you are saying. And I feel like the opposite end of that same spectrum, you're like, get Bam out of the mid post because we got 50, 11 people in there. I'm like, get those other 50, 11 people out of there. <laughs> Let Bam be there. But you Man. also, in order for it to work, agree, you have man. to have you have to have someone, though, who is in who takes up a presence in the low post. The times where the like when when Kevin so the the pick and pop ability of Kevin is great, but Kevin's willingness to also seal a person, get post position, like, and and this is like I guess a difference of philosophy and what you think is easier, how you kind of want to construct your team or whatever. And I get that, but like, there's a way to there's a way to stretch it, stretch the space kind of width wise with more shooters and shit on the outside. And I know that's the thing, but like, there's also a way to stretch it from the top and like a solid presence down low who commands more than the 
one body, one and a half kind of bodies. And I think that is something that I want them to continue to think about, like having versatility or stretchability, collapsibility, however you want to phrase it in that way also. Yeah. But no, that is probably I agree. Yeah, I agree. Like you can't be I'm not I'm not saying kick that. Bam out of the mid post to give the yeah. other 14 players mid post touches. I'm saying kick everybody out that motherfucker. Like I need more Start people over. space. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I need I need people to space. I think they need attack mismatches better just when they do get that practice. shit in the post. But you know it is what it is. I still hey, t- you see the thing, tough L, but I still believe. I feel you, Tiffany. Barely, me, Tiffany Haywood Meeks. <laughs> oh, I like it. Uh, uh, talk about your boy. Talk, t- t- close us out. Talk about your boy who was sensational again. You know what he was. I, I kind of feel like I don't know. I I'm 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 used to it now. I mean yeah. I'm I'm just used to it. So I don't yeah, think like you've been here before. Right. I've been here before. <laughs> I, I, hmm, I was here last time. Okay. Early. Early. And nobody else was here dancing. <laughs> mm. I, I was Tiff. I just wasn't on Hebe. I was on the other okay. side of the same thing. <laughs> but um in all seriousness, he it's hard for me to be like, yeah, I knew this or whatever, because honestly, like that was supposed to be a win. I was supposed to be celebrating that that hard play. They really fucked it up the for win. you. Fair. Yeah, they did. They did. Jimmy fucked it up for me. He really did. That's so noble of you. Right. I love so, that. so I'm just kind of <laughs> like, eh. but I'm gonna say he is putting it together, yeah. and you see it in real time i know people say it all the time but you see it in real time and i'm just i'm enjoying it i love it because i have the same pit in my stomach that i had last season the season's gonna start and i'm gonna be looking for haywood and you know what he's gonna be giving me magic johnson mean away from the bench Mm. I'm not going to be here. I don't know. I hope not. I don't think so. Uh, They're going to have a lot of questions uh, come in playoff time uh, of their rotation. I've said before, I mean, if Duncan doesn't look healthy, you know, he could be a guy that might lose time. Haim is a guy that I think at this point is on the outside looking in. Um, unfortunately, can sad after so. So there's a lot of questions considering how well Highsmith's playing and 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 they, he's playing well at the right time. I mean, so it's gonna be let's go. We're gonna have some uncomfortable conversations going down the stretch. But honestly, what they're getting from Haywood has just been absolutely incredible. And just anytime you get a guy that's shooting that well, who can defend you, that's just a win. In addition to running a competent fast break. A finishing ability. I know Bond had it a great tweet about how natural part. it looked. Yes, yeah. the, it was the, the finish, and mm. and I, and you can see the you can see his athleticism and the explosivity and like his alleys and kind of just the way he holds himself. But I the finish the the one the drive, but like being able to express athletically in an acrobatic way, right. kind of around the rim. I, I that was fun for me to see from him, and that sets other things up for me. Fortunately, Jimmy ruined it for all of us, and we can't be celebrating. Yep. But we'll get you, you know, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll get you next time, hopefully, guys. Um, thank you for joining <laughs> us on this fine, fine Thursday evening in April. Um, I think we got you Sunday for Pacers. I believe that's who they play on Sunday. What time is that? That is a five p.m. start uh, at Indiana. So. <laughs> We will bring you coverage. Yeah, T- Tiff is like Magic Johnson. I-, I ain't gonna be there. I will be there. Whoever else wants to hop on, I got you covered. Sunday, I think that's the women's final. Child, I ain't gonna be here. Okay, so Bond's not here either. I- I'll hold it down. If I'm alone, I- if I'm alone. Fuck it, I hold on. Uh, I believe we're off tomorrow at Houston, uh, barring something spectacular, which I don't see happening. So, uh, it is what it is. So we'll see you guys tomorrow or Sunday. And uh, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we love you. Uh, bye.